hello everyone in this video we are going to look at singularity functions and we are going to see how to apply these singularity functions to draw shear force and bending moment diagram and also we can use them to calculate the shear force and bending moment at any one particular point along a beam and uh, we are going to consider statically determined beams in this particular lecture let's go why do we need uh, to discuss this we need to understand what singularity function is why we are using it and the, the application to different loading conditions then we will also use MATLAB to implement singularity functions in the shear force and uh, bending moment diagrams now to handle the discontinuities in the shear force and uh, bending moment curves we introduce a family of functions called singularity functions and these are defined as if we have a function of x given by the singularity these are singularity brackets and we will have at uh, the singularity brackets when we have uh, x minus a to power n will equal to uh, the Macri's brackets of course we open this bigger bracket and uh, this will mean it is x minus a to power n for x greater than or equal to a and if it is uh, if x is less than a then this function reduces to zero we also have uh, the similar function and uh, at different conditions you see we see that for n less than zero at uh, x not equal to a that means you may have x less than a and x greater than a then this function will reduce to zero but if n is less than zero and x is equal to a at that point the function is undefined so these are singularity functions and we are going to see how to apply them we will see that the application of the singularity function is one of the easiest way to come up with a bending moment equation or a shear force equation which can later on be used to draw the shear force and uh, bending moment diagrams and uh, these are so helpful in design so that you determine where to do the transverse reinforcement or where to do more of the longitudinal reinforcement on structural members such as beams now the basic singularity functions that we are going to apply in this particular study we will see a unit doublet we will see a unit impulse unit step a unit ramp and unit acceleration as the respective ratio shown in figure one the unit impulse is sometimes also referred to as a Dirac delta function uh, these uh, particular functions are also applied in other fields of engineering for example electrical engineering so in this particular uh, study we are going to see how they can be modified and be utilized in the study of shear forces and bending moments in structural members such as beams now this is figure one we are seeing that uh, a unit doublet can be applied where you have if we consider this one being the axis of the beam we will can uh, use this one especially when we are looking at the load function for for, for, for a beam that is uh, carrying a, cons a concentrated moment uh, for a unit impulse we will see that it is a road condition where we have uh, we will apply it where we have uh, for example a point load then likewise on a unit step we will apply it where we have uh, a moment and we are writing down maybe the bending moment equation and we will apply this we have mo that moment then times this function to power zero you can treat these uh, singularity brackets as the usual brackets there is no big uh, uh, technicality in application of them during the calculation so take them to be like the usual brackets for now then we will also look at a unity ramp a unity ramp is also used 
and this can be for example applied where you are writing a Benny moment equation and the what is in equation is a point load so you are looking for the moment of a point load uh, and you use uh, the function that refer that, that, that is uh, borrowed from a unit RAM then uh, where you have uh, for example uh, distributed loads if it is uniformly distributed load you will find you're using uh, a unit acceleration so if you are writing the Benny moment equation uh, where you have a uniformly distributed load you will have to multiply that w if it is a uniformly distributed load in kilonewton per meter that w uh, divided by two then you might apply this function you might apply it by this function uh, which is the x minus a everything squared and that is for now this is a unit acceleration and i've told you how we are going to apply the loading of beams can be determined from superposition of a singularity function for the load distribution a function to x the unit doublet is the distribution function representation for the applied moment and the unit impulse is the representation for an applied load for example if we have uh, an applied torque or moment at a point x equal to a uh, then we will see that the road function due to this moment is going to be m o then singularity function a, um, x minus a to power negative two this is a unit doublet and the, this unit doublet you just multiply it by the bending moment or the moment that has been applied at that particular point and you will produce what we call a load distribution function now uh, you know in uh, dealing with a uh, load function uh, the shear force and the bending moment you know the integral of uh, a shear force function gives rise to a bending moment function therefore if we are dealing with a singularity functions we must also understand how we do integrate the singularity function now let us look at the integral from negative uh, infinity to for example maybe x uh, of uh, x minus a power n with respect to x uh, for example if we have uh, this n equal to negative 2 then the function will be uh, the usual way of, of, of integration but uh, we will not multiply uh, we will not divide by this new power it will always be x minus a at power n plus 1 so if it if n is negative 2 then it will be negative 2 plus 1 which gives you negative 1 if at all uh, n is equal to negative 1 and we are integrating it it will be x minus 8 power 0 if n is greater than or equal to 0 then we will apply the usual rules of integration and this will be x minus 8 power n plus 1 divided by the new power so this is how we integrate the singularity function depending on the conditions that are available for us once we have the distribution function to x we can integrate it to get the shear force a v of x and the bending moment m of x function for example we have said if we want the shear force uh, function then it will be v of x if it is v then it will be v of x equal to negative 2x plus c1 c1 is the constant of integration and we are looking at if uh, this uh, 2 of x is having a load that is uh, pointing vertically downwards and that's why we are introducing that negative to just show us the sign convention of the load then uh, m of x will be the bending moment equation and this will be of course integrating uh, v of x twice or just integrating i mean integrating two of x twice which would also be the same as integrating v of x so it will be minus v of x plus if i integrate c1 it will be of course uh, c1 uh, x then plus of course c2 and uh, in the future we will see how to determine this constant of course we determine these constants by assuming 
boundary conditions. If the boundary conditions are available for us, then we are able to determine C1 and C2. But in most cases, we are going to always find that those constants are equal to zero. Now, the integration of the singularity function in the load distribution and the resulting internal shear force distribution and internal bending moment distribution is summarized in the table below. You can see this table if we have a concentrated moment, the distribution, the load distribution function will be true m0 x minus a to power negative 2. Then, if we want the shear force, uh, the shear force uh, equation will be v of x equal to m0 x minus a power negative one of course by integrating this function and the uh, bending moment will equal to m uh, m naught x minus a power zero of course by integrating v so the same thing will be applied to a uh, point load for a point load since it is facing vertically downwards it will be negative p into x minus a uh, of course uh, you put it into singularity brackets and power negative one if we wanted the v of x then you integrate this function and you have a zero here then if you want the bending moment equation you integrate this again and get this p x minus a power one uh, but remember uh, of course you maintain this negative uh, p because we are considering vertically downward force to be negative then if you have a distribution a distributed load uh, if it is uniformly distributed the the function true of x will be the load distribution function will be true uh, equal to negative w since it is facing downwards then x minus a everything power zero then if we integrate this you will get negative w x minus a to power one then this if we integrate it you get this particular function if it is uh, a linear varying a distributed load for example if it is triangular then still you pass through the same by considering m to be the slope since the load is uh, facing downwards to be negative then you integrate this you'll have m out of two of course this is x minus one to power uh, x minus eight power one then uh, if i integrate it then it will be x minus a power two then m out of two then this will finally give you the bending moment as m out of 6 x minus 8 power 3 the general case gives us f of x equal to k of x minus a to power n whereby k is the slope and if it is in, if we are considering the vertical downward forces if our section is here section x x and is at a distance x from the origin o then the bending moment will be from integrating this twice you integrate the load distribution function twice so that you have negative k out of n plus one into n plus two then uh, x minus a to power n plus one thank you so much for following us please keep posted as we go into details find out how practically we can utilize the singularity function to help us compute for any bending moment or shear force at any point along the beam